so we are with Jack and Emma and we are gonna play a fun little game of they've lived on the road for a little bit and we're just gonna ask them some questions and go through some yeah. things. Do some pain uh, <laughs> through some things. Uh, damn, she hurried up. I was trying to get her doing dishes because um, this is the reality and we wanna show you the reality. They're doing dishes in the sink. Putting it all away. And putting it all away. So this is their van. Do you guys have a fancy name for it? Savannah. Savannah. <laughs> of course it is. Uh, so what about your Instagram? What about it? What like what is your Instagram? Uh, Midwest. Midwest underscore van bonds. Okay. It's our band and then Instagram. Emma also has a new Instagram she's starting up called Camp Stove Chef. And it's just all of her cooking. All, yeah, all everything the, we cook. All the delicious the food she makes. On this camp stove. Because that's awesome. all we have to cook with. Sure. <laughs> but it's life so, for us. so I guess that's like question number one. What do you use? Where do you cook? Obviously, you're we showing use it. use this camp stove that Jack got years ago. Yeah. And we usually cook here. We like to cook outside too on picnic tables and wherever we can find somewhere that's not quite as claustrophobic. Sure. Usually right here. <laughs> what do you have running above you? Our fan. So that pulls out all the gases mm -hmm. and propane and all that stuff. Sure. Yeah. So question number two, <laughs> what, where do you guys shower? Uh, Planet Fitness membership. Sure. Um, but, you know, you can't always find a Planet Fitness. They're yeah. far in between. Sometimes. Right now we're in the middle of Utah outside of Zion and yeah. the only Planet Fitness is a plenty of good hikes. Yes. But they don't got the shower at the end. Uh, Unless uh, you go on a really cold creek. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but the yeah. lakes. Lots of lakes, lots of creeks. Um, Campsites. You know, sometimes it's just a wet wipe on your armpits and change your underwear and Hope for another day. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But with a view like this, I'd rather Tis the view. All right, question number three, the huge. Where do you guys go to the bathroom at? Um, I pee myself. A lot. Every time. It's, 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 <laughs> Easier. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, no, um, I mean, to be honest, <laughs> we have a gallon jug and we pee in that sometimes. So. Sure. That's if we're stealth camping and sure. you know, you can't go pee outside, but we're out here, once it gets dark, I'm peeing on the side of the van, peeing wherever. Yeah, sure. At gas so you're telling me that gas stations and grocery stores and things like that have bathrooms? Yeah. Oh. 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 Jeez, awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we got the main questions that are always asked, yes. but let's dig into some of the funner stuff. To Jack and Emma. <laughs> All right, so the next question we have is we want to ask you, what got you into van life? What made you start this journey? Um, for both of, us, both of us, it is different, but when I was like 17, maybe 16, I saw a video on YouTube of, you know, the usual, some guy turning a bus into a house, and I was like, that's sick, and then it kept popping up in my recommended. So every day I'd see a new build out, and it originally just led me to want to live this life, you know? So um, I've always dreamed about it. I always thought about it, but it sort of felt really far-fetched. And I um, I wanted it. So I kept saving money as I was young and just saved, saved, saved for this life. But I didn't know if I'd be able to achieve it. But having money when you're saved when you're 17 is not a bad idea. For sure. Um, um I say, I think you knew longer than I did that I wanted that you wanted to do van life, um, but I did the traditional thing and went off to college in Washington. I'm from Illinois, um, so I went to school in Washington State, and it was beautiful, and I went on all these backpacking trips and started traveling more and was like, wow, like, I want to see more of this, but not just be stuck in another state. So van life was like the best option for me to be able to travel freely and um, I had also save money, which was helpful. Um, and yeah. Okay, awesome. You touched on a really cool point. Yeah. So like, 
I know we're going to get into your guys' story, yeah. but real quick, how many states have you guys been to? Because you said you didn't have to be locked down in one state. 30-something? Yeah, we've been to 30-something together in a year and a half of dating. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So how old are you guys? 21. Both of us, um, freshly. Yeah, we met when we were 19, had this crazy dream. Um, and Both were kind of looking to do van life and we're yeah. okay with doing it on our own, but then we found each other that both wanted to do it and we're like, this yeah. is more so nine plausible months, and more fun. Eight months into the relationship, we bought a house and started building it out and now we're traveling. So you built all of this on your own? Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Um, we had a little help from, from Emma's family grandpa and, and friends and stuff, but... Uh, other than that, it's... YouTube. Yeah, YouTube. <laughs> sure. Oh, yeah, Very for sure, time. us too. Come on in. <laughs> all right, so you mentioned that you guys built this all by yourselves. We so did. just give us a little tour of your, your little home. Yeah, so, I mean, you can see it all pretty much, but this is our bed. It's permanent. We don't, like, fold it up every night. We store a bunch of stuff on it. There's shit everywhere. <laughs> you have to take it off at night. But that's our bed. It's always there and super comfy. Um, we have a bunch of cabinets and storage. We have a sink over here that uses a foot pump, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, that is rad. Yeah, it's great. We love it. And then this is our little cooking area usually. Um, we just made dinner. And then here we have our fridge and our bench seat. Um, Show so, them this cool feature. I'm yeah, the swivel seat swivel is our seat. favorite thing. Is that it turned into your... So our passenger seat swivels mm -hmm. and we can have more seating oh. for everyone. <laughs> Perfect. So what would you say is your guys' favorite feature of the van? I love the swivel seat. Um, I, like I love the fridge. Because yeah. we lived out of a car for a little bit and had a cooler and it was awful. <laughs> so you just said you lived out of a car. Yes. How long did you live in a car? A month and a half. Yeah. A Where month did and you a guys half. all go on that trip? So you guys are like 21 years old, but you've been doing this for a year and a half together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so this trip was last year, right? Yeah. So you started out in a car, you ran for a month and a half. Yeah, we took yeah. his family car, went for a month and a half from Chicago out to Washington, down California, and back. Slept in a tent most nights. A few nights we slept in the car and had to move everything. And that's when we learned we could travel together <laughs> and that buying a van wasn't as crazy as we thought. Sure. If awesome. you can live in a small car, so two months after, van. Yeah, that you can live it. in an apartment yeah. on wheels. Yeah. So two months after that, we bought this van and started building it. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. And how long did your build take? Um, so it took eight months, but Chicago winter. So it was, awful. It was probably like more like four months of real build time because we had you know, two feet of snow piled on top of the van. And, and a lot of days weather. that we worked all day and made zero progress because we didn't know what we were doing. Sure. Yeah. And we built like a like box or a chest or a drawer or something and it didn't work and we had to scrap it and try yeah, again sure. the next day or the next free day we had. Mm -hmm. sure. So a lot of it was not even <laughs> productive. <laughs> but it was, you guys were yeah, learning. Yeah, but we, we were right. Right. Kind of, right. Um, um, so a month and a half running around in a car, decided to build a, a van out. What is your van? Uh, it's a 2006 Dodge Sprinter, uh, Mercedes Benz engine, turbo diesel, and it's running. She's got a 100 and. Wheelbase. Yeah, 140 wheelbase, high roof, but um, 182,000 miles on it. Yeah. Um, we put how many? Like 20? Yeah, put like 25 on her. Wow. ourselves yeah. and sure. then before that it was a kitchen remodeling truck yeah. <laughs> sure and then we remodeled the kitchen now we yeah, we're yeah. <laughs> now it's got a kitchen yeah, yeah. probably Perfect. be sad yeah. about our cabinets up there <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> custom and one question i have because we are all tall people yes so Yummy. obviously emma can stand straight up in this van which is lovely and how tall are you i'm 511 Five eleven, so, and I think six foot would be like the max. Sure. And then we sleep side to side too, um, which he fits perfectly. You're five eight eight, and <laughs> I sleep a little bit on an angle, sometimes kind of scrunched up, but that's how I sleep anyway, so it works fine for us. Sure. But I know some people need the longer beds too, so sure. It's all personal preference. Yeah. So. You guys have been out for four months now in the van, and 
what's been the best day yet? Other than the day you met up. Yeah, obviously. Oh, yeah, Number obviously. one was meeting these lovely folks, but <laughs> number two. Now that he's done lying. Yeah. What was number two? Um, my birthday. Um, so my 21st birthday was in Alaska, which we didn't expect to happen. We didn't think we would make it there. And then we thought we would be leaving before my birthday was over once we got, or yeah, before my birthday was even there. Mm -hmm. So we got to celebrate my birthday in Alaska. We went hiking. We picked berries. It was just an awesome the day. day. We went whitewater rafting. Yeah, she took us whitewater rafting, and then we. Um, so we got back to our campsite. Beautiful campsite, right on Glacier Lake. Icebergs floating in it, and we're just hanging out one night. And two guys come up to us, start talking to us. They were hammered, and <laughs> so was I. And we start talking, and they're like, "Hey, you guys should come over. We're having a sweat lodge later." I don't know what a sweat lodge is, but I'm there. So I tell them it's going. my birthday and I come over and we drink some beers, hang out, and they have these pack rafts, which are just inflatable kayaks. Hey, you guys could take them out on the glacial lake. And I'm like, okay. So it's sure. kind of raining and we're paddling out around this glacial lake, just geeking out, touching <laughs> icebergs. Icebergs are flipping and it's probably midnight right now. So like, it's still light out. It was, sure. it was insane. We paddle back, bring the rafts. And um, yeah. this yeah. kid, Callan, he is heating up rocks with propane, getting them up to 900 degrees. He has a scanner, he's scanning them, and they reach 900 degrees. He puts them in this like tent with rocks around it, and the tent was like no bigger than a fire ring. So I get in there naked with <laughs> seven other guys I that just I met. just met, <laughs> and we're all in there, and they start pouring lake water on it, and they start steaming we're sweating it's and it's 30 degrees outside so oh it felt goodness. amazing but we're sweating our asses off it was like nothing else then the girls came in so there's 11 people in this really small space and everybody's naked uh like the girls had bikinis on yeah, yeah, we had sure, bikinis. yeah. yeah. And, but it was no, nothing i've ever done you know right. nothing sure. I'll ever do again and uh yeah and then cal and he he looks at me and he says well boys it's time for us men to take a dip in the lake oh and yeah it's midnight it's 30 degrees out and there's icebergs in this lake and we all go swimming in this lake oh. and come out and it was nothing nothing I'll ever experience again is awesome and just weird as that sure. was you know? that kind of encompasses why we love then, meeting people yeah. traveling sure. and stuff because they're you're so welcoming and you have these crazy experiences that you would never have with anyone else yeah. and it made it so much better that it was in Alaska on your birthday and this sure. was really special. And the plan was just to have some beers, watch a movie in the van and go to sleep. <laughs> yeah. It just took the turn happen. to be the best day of my life. That's so. awesome. So, yeah. what was the worst day? The worst day. Oh, God. Um, we had a nail in our tire one day. Not a big deal. Normal. Uh, that sucked. We broke down twice, but that was like, we weren't really hard traveling then. Sure. Um... I think just like sometimes after driving for so long it can get yeah. tiring and if you sure. haven't showered and stuff like that you can right. just kind of edgy yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's like yeah. nothing out of that day is crazy bad um but it's travel just, days get yeah long. travel days yeah. are long. like then we get hungry then hangry we get yeah you know, like we get yeah. it too it's yeah. it's all part of it yeah. for sure but it's all like even the bad days like our, like the fact that we can't remember our worst day, but you sure. can remember yeah. the best. Yeah. Right. It always right. in. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the best part is, is you guys have a van that you can do differently than what we can in a mint green bus. Yes. <laughs> and that is stealth camping. Yeah. yeah. So, so. <laughs> we're not a total giveaway, like a mint green bus, for example. Um, we do have a topographic map taped on or uh, painted on the side. But we spent a month in California. And on the coast. Camped on the coast, just camped where it was legal for us to park overnight, not legal where it's you could sleep in your vehicle because yeah. you're pretty much banned in all of California. Right. So we got creative. And one of the biggest ways we got creative <laughs> was putting this on the dash at night because someone walks by and they're like, oh, what's this van doing here? I've never seen it before. Oh, it's a work van. We have curtains we put up so that no one can like see into our van when we're hanging out. We usually try to like stay out of the van until it gets dark 
so that we're not bothering anyone. Parking is really important too. Like you don't want to park right in front of someone's house. You want to be courteous to yeah. people that are living there, but like there would be like side bushes or like parks and neighborhoods and no one really cares if you park there. And so that's usually where we'll go. And we don't try to make a lot of noise or be bothersome yeah. at all. And usually just like hang out in the van and go to bed, um, spend all day at the beach. Mm -hmm. And it was like the best. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we'd go surfing and then come home into our van and go to sleep and wake up and surf again. Yeah, and no one bothered yeah. us and it was... Yeah. Um, Have you had any encounters of like knocks on your door? Yeah, so, had one. Yeah, we had one. Um, we we're in Jasper, Canada within the National Park um, and they're very strict on camping there so you have to be in a legal campground to camp and campgrounds were fifty dollars and mm. i didn't have that money for and, a night yeah for one night you know so for sure we decided to sleep in the van and an overnight parking lot and mm -hmm. it's legal to park there overnight for rvs so and there we were a bunch there. of other rvs and campers that were obviously sleeping there too so it's kind of like the oh we're not alone we can totally do this right and so for two nights we were totally fine no, no knocks, nothing. And then the third night, and this is where we learned, like, don't overstay your welcome, mm -hmm. or you're not even really welcome in the yeah. first place. So. <laughs> you can get away with one night, but don't push it too But keep two. moving, kind of. Yeah. Um, yeah, but anyways. Yeah, we got a knock. Yeah, yeah we, go. we got a knock at 7.15 in the morning. Our alarm was set for 7.30, yeah. and we were tired. We hiked all day the day before. Yeah. So we wanted to get that 15 minutes. And I wake up and Emma's still sleeping and I hear the knock and I kind of wake her up and she's like, oh, I don't think so. And I get up and I look through the curtains. I see this mirror and out of the mirror, I see a cop right here. And, I see, and then I look in the other mirror, there's another cop on the other side. They start yanking all of our door handles trying to get in. And I was like, what the hell? And I open the door and he's like, give me your license. Give him my license. Comes back with a $50 check and he's like, see you later. Yeah, and they got everyone and it was we were there a long time and yeah, not supposed to be so it's kind of you take like but a 50 dollars ticket is like how much we would have paid for a campsite so we're willing to yeah. risk it a little bit we know a lot of people that get knocks and just warnings and stuff so mm -hmm. like what you always say is it's better to ask for forgiveness than ask for permission yeah. so yeah we'll kind of we've gotten a little more ballsy with it yeah, as sure because we've heard from other people that that's what they do and sure. most of the time cops don't care and you're not their biggest priority. Yeah. Sure. yeah. And but. the biggest part is someone calling the police on you because you're outside their house and you know, you have, you're peeing on the lawn or you're, you know, you're doing mm -hmm. something you shouldn't be doing. Right. Um, and it's obvious, so don't make it obvious and you can get away with it. Sure. What is the biggest piece of advice you would give to somebody who is just starting van life? Um, or get, bus life get your bearings i mean go out into the desert or go in blm land and really like get used to it get used to your schedule and like know it takes time you're not just gonna like build a bus get in the bus and go camp somewhere one night and feel normal it takes a while it's yeah like, i would say develop like not a routine like where you have to do the same thing every day but like little things that like we get up and make breakfast yeah. every day and coffee and kind of just have time to like relax and decide what we're going to do that day and we have like certain chores that we know we need to get done like changing out the water taking out the garbage and like getting that stuff kind of down takes a little bit but it's crazy how fast you adjust and I would say just keep doing some of the things you did before too like just because you're living in a van and sometimes life seems hectic and crazy even though it's super fun like keep like if you like to journal or go on a run or skateboard or whatever like keep finding ways to do that um because it brings a little bit more of like normalcy to something that feels really strange at first sure yeah. all right so four months dating yeah. bought a van together mm -hmm. and we've known you for like two days now and you guys are a pretty <laughs> rad couple but <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> how happy how glad how sure are you guys that you made the right decision 100 percent, like 11 out of 10 you know? yeah. Yeah. yeah it's i i will never regret this experience and yeah i wanted to keep going forever yeah um, nothing's guaranteed so i'm glad yeah. that we're doing it now and if it ended tomorrow we talked about it would be like we'd still be so happy that we did it mm -hmm. and for us traveling together too like we have bad days where we're 
mad at each other for stupid things, but like when you live in a 60 square foot van, you get over the stupid stuff real yeah. fast and you talk about what you need to talk about. So sure. like, it's not like that has been a damper either. Mm -hmm. Like having to work through real life things while yeah. on the road. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I think that's all I have. Do you have anything? I don't have anything Do else. Do you guys have one last thing you would say to somebody that's possibly seen something or heard something about living in a van or whatever? Like, what's one thing? Save your money and go for it. It's the biggest leap of faith, but the best thing you could do, you know? Yeah, and I would say go for it 100%. Like, don't go in halfway and like be like, oh, I don't know, like I bought this, but now I'm gonna let sure. it sit there. Just <coughs> do it, bite the bullet, and you'll be so happy. In the <laughs> bus community, I've noticed several buses that get the seats tore out mm -hmm. and nothing else, and then yeah. they're back And it's gonna feel like you're not making progress when you're doing stuff sometimes. Sure. You just gotta keep going and know that better things are ahead and that you're, this is why we do it, to meet lovely people yeah. and Sure. When yeah. do they show up? <laughs> <laughs> They're on their way. Uh, <laughs> definitely not on the cruise. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. Well, I think that's all I got. Awesome. Tanya, that's all on. I've got. Thank you guys for sharing your story for with sure. us. And um, one more time, just drop what your how people can get a hold of you, follow you. So our Instagram for our van and our travels is at Midwest underscore Vagabonds. And then we have another Instagram that is like our cooking in the van and that's at Camp Stove Chef. And I'm here to tell you, they make good food. They do. <laughs> yep. Simple but delicious. I eat good. <laughs> <laughs>